were in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who had fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. Israelites, let's get right into the next chapter of Unmasking Melchizedek. The Most High has revealed the mysteries behind Melchizedek. He was the first priest anointed by the Most High in the world. Melchizedek's mission and duties consist of him being a king, priest, and ministering to the people in the great city called Jerusalem. Melchizedek possessed the three gifts the Most High gave to Adam, priesthood, kingship, and prophecy. These are the three glorious gifts which God made to Adam. The first is kingdom, wherein God made Adam king over his works. The second glorious gift is priesthood, in that God breathed into his face a spirit of life. And the third glorious gift is prophecy, for Adam prophesied concerning what God thought of doing. The Most High created a priesthood that he named after Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek consists of having the three gifts the Most High gave to Adam, priesthood, kingship, and prophecy. After Melchizedek, there weren't any other person holding these three positions at the same time. The Most High has called many to the office of prophecy, kingship, and priesthood. Nobody has ever held all three positions in this world except Melchizedek. David, the son of Jesse, was anointed and appointed to be a king. He didn't have the gift of priesthood and prophecy. King David was a warrior and the Most High anointed him to lead his people for 40 years as king. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, Thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. All of our fathers before and after the flood never had the dual position of kingship and priesthood. Melchizedek was the only one that held both positions at the same time, which is why the order is named after him, the order of Melchizedek. The Most High gave Melchizedek all three positions because Melchizedek was an earthly example of what the Most High wanted to do on the earth. We all have heard the saying, as above, so below. Most people believe the earth where we live is above and hell is below. This slogan is often associated with the Satans. The truth is the heavens is above and where we are is below. The Most High wanted to bring to the earth a priesthood just like in the heavens. Adam was to be the ruler over all of the works of the Most High. The Most High gave him three glorious gifts that confirmed the dominion the Most High gave to him on the earth. Adam has life on earth, and I created a garden in Eden in the east that he should observe the testament and keep the command. I made the heavens open to him that he should see the angels singing the song of victory and the gloomless light. And he was continuously in paradise, and the devil understood that I wanted to create another world because Adam was Lord on earth to rule and control it. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, 
and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Before and after the flood, the people were misled by the Satans. The sin of idolatry polluted the earth, even during the time of Melchizedek. The sin of idolatry was rampant on the earth. The Most High sent Melchizedek to be the foundation to the priesthood and kingship he wanted to establish on the earth. Through prophecy, kingship, and priesthood, the people would have an example of how to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. With the Most High starting the priesthood with Melchizedek, it paved the way for the Messiah to obtain dominion on the earth to restore Adam. Remember, Adam said, when the word of God becomes flesh, he will restore his kingdom, priesthood, and prophecy. The crown on my head shall be baptized with his blood, and then shall my salvation be wrought, and he shall restore me to my kingdom, and shall give me my priesthood and my gift of prophecy. Then the voice was silent by the power of God. In order to restore Adam to the gifts the Most High gave to him, the word of God had to obtain these three positions on earth to return the dominion back to Adam. That is why the Most High blessed his only begotten son just as he blessed Adam. The Most High gave to Yahshua everything Adam had. Some of you don't know that the Most High gave Michael Adam's body after his death. Yahshua's kingdom is not of this world. By now, everyone should know Yahshua's kingdom is paradise. The Garden of Eden, the very place Adam and Eve called home before the fall. Yahshua is over the righteous only, not all flesh. The only people that will serve the Most High are the righteous. Therefore, Yahshua is over the best part of mankind, the righteous. I saw in the night visions, and behold... One, like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Only the righteous will inherit Yahshua's kingdom, not all flesh. That is why the tree of life that is in the garden will be food for the righteous only, not all flesh. The Satans are over the wicked. If your name is not written in the correct Lamb's book of life, Yahshua would say to the wicked, depart from me and prepare for the devil and his angels. To the Israelites who are in denial of Michael's position, instead of denying the truth, ask the Most High to help your unbelief. If Yahshua was over all flesh, why was he sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to all the righteous, the best part of mankind? Please use discernment. Through Yahshua's sacrifice, it reconciled the Most High to his people and to his creation, as well as restoring Adam. We often hear the saying that Yahshua was the second Adam. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Adam was given kingship, prophecy, and priesthood. The Most High even made the animals bow down to Adam and gave Adam the authority to name all of the animals. Adam never had the opportunity to stand in his position as ruler over the works of the Most High's hands. After the flood, the Most High appointed Melchizedek, the only person who had all three gifts to start the process of the restoration. Yahshua, who also held all three positions, kingship, priesthood, and prophecy became the final Adam to complete the mission of reconciling us back to the Father. When you hear people say there were many Melchizedeks, that is not true. There was only one. The authors in the various books that claim some of our fathers to be Melchizedek, they held one of those positions, not all three at the same time. For example, Abraham was not a king or a priest, but he had the gift of prophecy. Israelites, you always have to look into the deep things of the Most High to see the purpose and how everything comes together. Melchizedek was a forerunner to the Messiah before the word of God became flesh. 
just as John the Baptist was known as a forerunner before the coming of the Messiah. Both John the Baptist and Melchizedek wore similar clothing. Both Melchizedek and John had to look poor and their loins were to be girded with a leather belt. Methuselah prophesied to Noah of the garment Melchizedek should wear when ministering before the body of Adam in the middle of the earth in the great city called Jerusalem. Again, Methuselah said to Noah, O my son, let him who ministers unto God and before the body of our father Adam have a clothing of skin and be girt about his loin with leather. Let him wear no ornament, yet let his raiment be poor. Let him be alone, fasting, and stand praying our Lord God to watch over the body of our father Adam, for it is a body of great value before God. And let him continue in his ministry, he, the priest of the Most High God, for he is well-pleasing unto God, and so is the ministry he fulfills before God. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. The book of Hebrews in the Bible said that Melchizedek was a foreshadow of the word of God. The book of Hebrews also said that Melchizedek resembled the Son of God. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. Melchizedek foreshadowed the works of the Messiah in the world before the word of God became flesh. That is why the scriptures in the book of Hebrews said he was made like unto a son of God. The word of God was the son of God that became flesh. The sons of God are the angels. How did Yahshua obtain all three positions in the world to restore Adam? We have to go back to Abraham. Abraham was the next person the Most High called after Melchizedek. From Adam to Melchizedek, we saw how the Most High preserved his laws and his words throughout the generations via our father who were appointed. The Most High didn't use religion to preserve his words and laws. He used the people he called and anointed. It started with Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Melchizedek, and now Abraham. The scriptures in the Bible start the journey of our salvation with Abraham. We often hear religious pastors reciting the covenant the Most High made with Abraham to make him a father to many nations. The workers of iniquity and religion use this covenant to give all people salvation. The Most High granted salvation to Adam and his seed only. Remember, Eve is the mother to all living. Adam is not the father to all living. I will keep reminding you that there are two species of mankind, and the fallen watchers are the father to one of those species of mankind. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come. Let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. As you just heard, Adam is the father to one species of mankind, while Eve is the mother to all living. Salvation was given to Adam's seed only. There are some people in this world who deny their origin from Adam. There's only one other possibility of who their father is if Adam is not their father. The fallen watchers are confirmed in the scriptures to establish a seed on this earth. The spirits of these children, the Nephilims, are on this earth causing offenses and violence, just as Enoch said. The scriptures did say they were giants on this earth before and after the flood. Remember, King David fought against Goliath in his generation. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. When the Most High opened the sealed scriptures, the interpretations given to us by our enemies in religion don't have the support of the truth of the Most High's words. When the Most High called Abraham and said to him that he will multiply his seed and make him a father to many nations, 
The Most High was establishing a people to represent him on this earth since the Satans was deceiving the people through idolatry. The people didn't have any leaders to teach them about the word of the Most High. During the time of Melchizedek, the earth was populated. Melchizedek was in Jerusalem, the middle of the earth ministering to the people that came to him for his great wisdom. Majority of the people outside of Jerusalem didn't know anything about the Most High. The scriptures in the book of Adam and Eve reveal how Satan deceived the people through idol worship. Then Satan, the worker of idols, saw a fountain of water near the fire pit and he came to it and looked at it and made a horse of gold and set it up on the edge of the fountain of water. And it so happened that all those who came to wash in that fountain of water bowed and worshipped to that golden horse. And from that time, the people of Fair began to worship horses. The far people were pagans and full of idolatry. After the flood, Satan continued to deceive the people by creating molten images. Satan would insert himself into these idol gods made with stones to speak with the people to deceive them. The Satans continue to deceive many in the form of idolatry today. Jesus is the most popular idol in this generation. Despite the wickedness on the earth, the Most High found Abraham who was righteous in his generation. Abraham hated the sin of idolatry. That is why he destroyed his father's gods. For Abraham, his son, was a righteous man and could not bear idols, yet he paid him all due respect as being his father. When the Most High called Abraham, the father had Abraham meet Melchizedek so that Melchizedek could transfer the truth of the Most High's words to Abraham. Despite the idolatry in the world during the time of Melchizedek, the Most High preserved Abraham. The father used his anointed Melchizedek to preserve his words and to do his will until he called Abraham. When Abraham accepted the call, the Most High established the everlasting covenant with Abraham. Through this covenant, the Most High was able to establish a righteous seed on the earth that will become a light to this world. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. The Most High started the process of establishing a righteous seed that he could use as the foundation to the earthly priesthood he wanted to establish on the earth, as well as a lineage of righteous kings to lead the people. Remember, the people didn't have any leaders or laws to direct them. Therefore, their iniquities grow worse and worse. Another reason the Most High established a righteous seed through Abraham to pave the way for the word of God to become flesh to accomplish his ultimate goal in this world. Restore Adam to his position as king over the works of his hands and to reconcile his creation back to him. Abraham is the foundation to the righteous seed the Most High chose to show himself strong through in this world. Out of Abraham came the Israelite bloodline. The Most High chose to become a light to this dark world. The Israelite bloodline is more than being a chosen, helpless people that need to be saved. Religion had made the failures of the Israelite the focus point to obtain power over them. If the Israelites believe they are hopeless and oppressed people that need to be saved, they will lose sight of the reason the Most High called them, which is to be a light in this dark world. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Instead of the chosen people being a light to the world to minister the truth of the Most High's words to the other nations, 
Religion have changed the narrative made the Israelites become a helpless people that can't think for themselves nor fight for themselves. The workers of iniquity disabled the Israelites from teaching the world about the Most High through their constant programming of them needing to be saved. The Most High already granted Adam and his seed salvation. That is why he planned long before you and I came into this world to restore Adam and the righteous of his seed. Instead of the Israelites teaching the world about their God, the world is teaching them about their idols. Other nations whom the Most High has placed spirits of authority over them to lead these people away from him are now teaching the holy people chosen by the Most High to be a light to the other nations. Israelites, the other nations don't know the Most High and they cannot receive the spirit of the Most High. Why do you continue with their doctrines in the awakening? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The spirit of truth dwell with you, Israelites. It's the spirit of truth that will tell you everything. The Most High established the Israelite bloodline to be an example to the other nations. The other nations will see your good works and glorify the Most High, just as you heard in the scriptures. Despite us being in the land of our captivity due to the iniquities of our ancestors, as well as our own sins, we're still commanded by the Most High to be a light to this dark world. Being scattered help us reach more people. Unfortunately, the Israelites have been deceived by the Satans in religion to distract them from the reason they were chosen. Religion made the focus on being saved. If you're righteous, you're already saved. That is why the Most High chose you to do his will in the world so that the other descendants of Adam can know the Most High. A scripture that I often use in the book of Hosea said that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Within that scripture, it said when you reject knowledge, the Most High will reject you and your children. I wanted to highlight another important message in that scripture that is often overlooked by many. The Most High said, you will no longer be a priest to me, for you have forgotten his laws. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. That scripture in the book of Hosea revealed the charges against the Israelites, as well as the earthly priesthood the Most High established through his chosen people. The Most High said, you cannot be a priest to me, for you have forgotten my laws. Because you have forgotten his laws, he will also forget your children. So many Israelites have lost their way. There are many Israelites waiting on other people to teach them instead of going to the Father and allowing the Father through His Spirit to teach them truth. If you take the time to have a conversation with some Israelites, majority of them are waiting on their Savior to start their life, while the Most High is waiting on you. The Most High gave you a job to do in this dark world. You're supposed to be a light that shines to the Gentiles so the other nations can know the Father. It's not all about you, Israelites. The Most High establishing the Israelite nation to minister to the other nations. Your Israelite heritage wasn't given to you for you to hold as a badge of honor to rub in other people's faces. The Most High constantly have to tell his people to humble themselves. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Despite being in the land of your captivity, you're still commanded by the Most High to be a light to this dark world. Some Israelites are letting the darkness in them shine brighter than the light of the Most High. The Most High established a righteous seed through the Israelite nation to give the word of God a way of receiving the gifts that was given to Adam. Remember, the Most High gave Adam three gifts, dominion through kingship over all of his works, as well as priesthood and prophecy. It was important that the word of God came from the lineage of Adam. Through our fathers and the righteous seed, 
the most high created in the earth, give the word of God a way of becoming flesh. That is why the Messiah's genealogy is listed in the scriptures. The Messiah's lineage traced back to Adam. Which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of No, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mahaliel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. The Israelite nation is a holy people the Most High used to establish a righteous priesthood on the earth, as well as a nation of kings. Through the Israelite nation, the word of God can establish his dominion on the earth. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. The progenitor of the Israelite bloodline is Jacob, the grandson to Abraham. Jacob's 12 sons are the progenitors of the 12 tribes that made up the Israelite bloodline. From the 12 sons of Jacob, the Most High chose Levi to establish the earthly priesthood in this world. The Levitical priesthood was established to cleanse the people from sins until the word of God becomes flesh. The Levitical priesthood is not the same as Melchizedek's priesthood. The Levitical priesthood consists of the high priest constantly offering sacrifices for the sins of the people. While Melchizedek's priesthood consists of one perfect sacrifice that will atone for the sins of the people continually. The Melchizedek priesthood is higher than the Levitical priesthood. For such a high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the peoples. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son, who is consecrated for evermore. Melchizedek is known as the Most High's priest forever. Also, the scripture said he was a priest continually. The word of God was the ultimate sacrifice that gave us access to find forgiveness of sins once we repent. The word of God became our high priest forever. With the Messiah becoming our high priest forever, the Messiah can make intercessions in the heavens before the Most High on our behalf. The Melchizedek priesthood made it so that the Messiah doesn't have to come in the flesh multiple times to atone for our sins. The Melchizedek priesthood allowed the Messiah to focus on being our advocate, intercessor, and mediator between the Most High, the Father, and us. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you, for he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander in chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I hope you're starting to see why the Messiah was not the father in the flesh. How can the Messiah be our mediator if he's the most high? If the Messiah became a priest, through the Levitical priesthood, he would have to dwell here in the temple that was destroyed in Jerusalem to offer sacrifices for us daily. That is why the Messiah's priesthood was established by the order of Melchizedek. Although the Melchizedek priesthood is higher than the Levitical priesthood, 
Levi's blessing in the nation of Israel is higher than the kingdom that was given to Judah. In the Testament of Judah, Judah said to his children to honor Levi. Judah is not the only one that said to their children to honor Levi. All of the sons of Jacob said to their children in their testament to honor Levi and Judah. The Most High chose Levi to give the priesthood and Judah the kingdom. The word of God said to Judah that the Most High has placed the earthly kingdom below the priesthood. And now, my children, I command you, love Levi, that you may abide and exalt not yourself against him, lest ye be utterly destroyed. For to me the Lord gave the kingdom, and to him the priesthood, and he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of God higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from the Lord and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. For the angel of the Lord said unto me, The Lord chose him rather than thee to draw near to him and to eat of his table and to offer him the first fruits of the choice things of the sons of Israel. But thou shalt be king of Jacob. Although the Levitical priesthood is on the earth, the Most High gave to Levi the things in the heavens as you just heard. Remember, the Most High took the Levites for himself. The Messiah's priesthood was established by the order of Melchizedek to become a priest continually. The order of Melchizedek consists of the dual role of priesthood and kingship. Another reason the Messiah's priesthood is established by the order of Melchizedek, the word of God, when he became flesh, he couldn't come from the tribe of Levi and the tribe of Judah. There was no way the Messiah can become a descendant of Aaron to obtain the priest's office and from the tribe of Judah to become a king. Melchizedek held both positions, priesthood and kingship. The order of Melchizedek gave the Messiah the priest position before the Most High forever. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Just as the Most High made Melchizedek a priest forever and the people made him a king in Jerusalem, the Messiah became a king by becoming a seed of Abraham through the tribe of Judah. You heard in the scriptures from the testament of Judah that the angel of the Lord told Judah that the earthly kingdom was given to him. The Most High used Judah as the way to give the Messiah kingship as well as the earthly kingdom. Remember, the Most High gave to Adam kingship, priesthood, and prophecy. The Most High also gave Adam dominion on the earth. With the Messiah coming through the lineage of Judah, the Messiah obtained the kingdom by the covenant the Most High made with Judah. When the Messiah became the lion from the tribe of Judah, he took back the earthly kingdom from the Satans. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they gave the kingdom to the Satans. When the word of God became flesh and descended to hell and took the keys, he also took Adam's dominion as well. I hope you're starting to understand why the Most High exalted the Messiah. When the Father exalted the Messiah, he also exalted Adam. Judah prophesied to his children in his testament that the Messiah would restore his kingdom. Adam also prophesied that the Messiah would restore his kingdom. And there shall be continual wars in Israel, and among men of another race shall my kingdom be brought to an end until the salvation of Israel shall come, until the appearing of the God of righteousness, that Jacob and all the Gentiles may rest in peace, and he shall guard the might of my kingdom forever. For the Lord aware to me with an oath that he would not destroy the kingdom from my seed forever. Israelites, do you now comprehend why you have to search the deep things of the Most High? Being a surface level reader will lead you into bondage in religion. In the scriptures in the Bible, when the Most High split our nation into two kingdoms, the Most High said to Solomon, the king of Judah at the time, that he was not going to take all of the kingdom away from Judah, but he would allow Judah to have one tribe. 
the Most High went on to say he will not take the kingdom from Judah for David's sake and for Jerusalem. We heard in the testament of Judah, the angel of the Lord promising Judah that he will not destroy the kingdom from his seed forever. Therefore, the Most High couldn't take the kingdom from Judah if the Messiah would obtain kingship in the kingdom through Judah. Albeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. The Most High kept the covenant he made with Judah not to take the kingdom from him. This covenant was established long before David became king and the Most High split our nation into two kingdoms. The Most High said he would not rend all of the kingdom from Judah because of David, as well as for Jerusalem, the city he has chosen. If you've been following the unmasking of Melchizedek, you will know that the great city Jerusalem was chosen by the Most High for several reasons. Jerusalem was chosen to be the place the Most High exalted and restored Adam. The Most High chose the middle of the earth as the location to show the world his sovereignty. Long before the tribe of Judah inherited Jerusalem and David built the city of David in Jerusalem, the Most High made Jerusalem a memorial for Adam, the middle of the earth in a city he built to return Adam to the ground which he came from. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The land of Canaan the Most High gave to the Israelites as the promised land. The Most High placed the righteous seed he created in the world from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to inherit the middle of the earth to do his will. Judah's land inheritance included the great city of Jerusalem. Israelites, that is another reason the Messiah had to come through the lineage of Judah, making the Messiah a king in Jerusalem, just like Melchizedek. Another meaning for Jerusalem is king of peace. The Messiah is known as the prince of peace. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Most High established the Messiah in the earth to become our High Priest forever through the order of Melchizedek. The Messiah obtained the kingdom and kingship in the world through the tribe of Judah. When the Messiah became flesh, he came to bring restoration. The Most High didn't send the Messiah to become a God. The Messiah came to fulfill everything written about him in the scriptures. Once his mission was complete, he went back to the Father to intercede on our behalf continually as our high priest in the heavens. The generation that will see the Messiah when he comes to humble the kings of the earth and deliver the righteous they will see him as Michael, the great prince that have been standing for the righteous. The scripture said he stands with the righteous to protect and deliver them. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Michael had been standing with our people from the beginning as the word of God, speaking and acting on the behalf of the Father who sent him. The Most High always show himself strong in the holy angels, as well as the people whose heart is perfect towards him. Melchizedek was a righteous man of God that had a perfect heart. The role Melchizedek played in the process of the Most High restoring his creation back to him should have been included in the scriptures written in the Bible. With the workers of iniquity omitting the story of Melchizedek from the scriptures, a vast amount of information of how the Most High chose to reconcile his creation back to him is missing in the scriptures. 
Through the workers of iniquity tampering with the scriptures, it gave the spirit of confusion the opportunity to deceive the people. For a period of time, the workers of iniquity and religion proclaimed they don't know the identity of Adam. There's no way to determine his race. In the meantime, majority of us never knew that Jerusalem, the center of the world, is the resting place for the first man. Our father Adam was exalted by the Most High in the greatest memorial in the earth and his children had no knowledge. Today, you know why Jerusalem is special to the Most High. And this place on which thou art standing and in which the body of Adam is laid, will I make a holy place. All creatures on earth shall be blessed in it and in it I will grant forgiveness unto all who come hither. Israelites, I hope you're starting to see why you must have a personal relationship with the Father. Through the Holy Spirit, the Most High can reveal truth to you. Everything the heathens removed and tampered with in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit can restore. Melchizedek was a foreshadow of the Messiah to come. Through the unmasking of Melchizedek, the Most High showed us how he used Melchizedek and all of our fathers before and after the flood as well as the righteous seed he created in the world through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelite bloodline to reconcile his creation back to him. Israelites, do you see how the truth of the Most High's words don't support the doctrines from religion? I hope you're starting to see why you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more, in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Israelite nation had a big role to play in preparing a place for the word of God to become flesh. The Israelites still have a job to do in the B system, maintaining your righteousness in the land of your captivity so that your light can shine bright before the Gentiles who watch your every move. Remember, it's through you that the other nations will know the most high. That is why you're the most influential people in this world. You set the trends. The time have come for you to set righteous trends. Religion don't teach the people about the God of Israel. The people worship idols in religion. The principalities and powers set over the nations made sure the people serve and worship idols instead of the most high. Our role is to continue to minister to the people so that they could know the truth. We are the salt of the earth. Don't lose your flavor. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have but lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. While we are doing the will of the Most High, our redemption will come. Melchizedek remained in the city of Jerusalem until his departure from this world. Israelites know that Melchizedek ministered to the people for a period of time after meeting Abraham and departing from the earth. His ministry didn't come to an end as soon as Abraham came. Matter of fact, when Rebekah was pregnant with Esau and Jacob, Rebekah wondered why her children was wrestling in her womb. It was Melchizedek who told Rebekah that two nations was in her womb. Then Isaac married when he was 40 years old. And Esau and Jacob, his sons, were born unto him when he was about 60 years of age. Rebekah, when with child and before the birth of Esau and Jacob, went to consult Melchizedek, who told her she had two nations in her womb and that the elder should serve the younger. The scriptures in the Bible say Rebekah was barren and Isaac prayed on her behalf and she conceived. The scriptures in the Bible said Rebecca went to inquire of the Lord to find out why the babies struggled in her womb. The scriptures in the Bible never said who Rebecca went to inquire about her children. The Lord in that verse was referring to a person. The scriptures never mentioned the person. They identified the person as the Lord. There are so many people who share the title Lord in the scriptures. The Messiah is a figure in the scriptures often referred to as Lord. Rebecca seek the most high through Melchizedek. Because the workers of iniquity remove Melchizedek from the scriptures, many of us assume she prayed and fast to get her answers. 
And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Melchizedek was around when Rebekah was pregnant with Esau and our father Jacob. Israelites, if the workers of iniquity included the story of Melchizedek into the scriptures, they also have to put the complete story of what happened to Adam and Eve into the scriptures. Because the Satans don't want you to know the truth, they remove Melchizedek and Adam from the scriptures. They briefly mention Melchizedek and Adam to acknowledge them, then they interpret the scriptures to correspond with their perspective. When you have the Holy Spirit, the Most High can guide you into all truth. When you let the scriptures speak, the scriptures unveil a vast amount of hidden truth. I hope the unmasking of Melchizedek answered a lot of the questions you had. Israelites, I hope you continue to let the truth of the Most High's words make you free. Rather, the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel.